Whenever I do a story on renewable energy, like the one I just did on onshore wave energy, I get comments like this. I don't see any waves. How is it gonna provide power when the water's calm? Now for that story, that was a test site where they plan to do the real deal out on the breakers where there's going to be constant wave energy. But I still get similar questions for solar and wind, and those have been around for a long time. So we figured we'd come here to Rutgers University where they study renewables. Did you know that according to the International Energy Agency, coal was finally surpassed by solar and wind, producing more than 16% of this country's energy needs. Even given that though, people still don't get it and they question renewables reliability. So even though renewables have been around forever, there are myths abound. Even the Department of Energy recently posted on X, wind and solar energy infrastructure is essentially worthless when it is dark outside and the wind is not blowing. We all know that renewable energy is weather dependent, mm -hmm. right? So weather plays a big part in renewables. Uh, but then that doesn't mean we should not pursue renewable energy as a central element of our electric system. The diversification of our energy sources is extremely important mm -hmm. uh, to make our energy system work reliably and cost efficiently. Let's talk about solar first. Of course, of course, direct sunlight is when they work best, but even when it's cloudy or partly cloudy, you still get reflection and you produce electricity. And see those high cirrus clouds? Those can actually enhance electricity production when it comes to solar. That's according to NOAA. And what about the whole sun setting part? Well, that's where battery storage and grid connectivity come in. Yep, you gotta hear this. So between 2021 to 2024, the battery storage here in the US has increased fivefold. According to the EIA, more than 20 gigawatts of battery storage has been added to the U.S. grid in just the last four years. That's like the power output of more than 20 nuclear reactors. There's been a dramatic decrease in the cost of batteries mm -hmm. over time. Um, so as we go forward, uh, I think batteries are going to play a significant role uh, in enabling uh, reliable and cost-efficient uh, energy uh, systems. There is also a lot of research that is happening at Rutgers as elsewhere and, and elsewhere about long duration storage. Here at Rutgers, one of the things they're studying is taking drones and taking pictures of the solar panels and then letting AI see if there are any problems to diagnose before a problem happens. It's apparently better than humans even going through. Now let's talk about wind. I sure learned a lot when I climbed to the top of a 400 foot turbine. Climate Central says that in 2023 alone, wind produced enough energy to power more than 39 million American homes. And most of that was from onshore wind. But you don't need much. In fact, six to nine mile per hour winds can start generating electricity. And that's pretty common in most places. Block Island in Rhode Island has been powered by offshore wind, five turbines, for the last nine years. Go outside of our country and renewables are working. The IEA says that when it comes to the growth of electricity demand, renewables are anticipated to meet 95% of that through 2027. Renewables aren't just helping to power electricity around the globe, but they are, of course, reducing the greenhouse gas emissions that we're pumping out. Renewable energy is a reality, right? It's, 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 um, it's accounting for 20% of our uh, electricity production uh, at the moment. So it's not a hypothetical question, right? We are nowhere near the potential that mm -hmm. could be uh, unlocked if we invest more in renewable energy. 